we're doing Jordan Peterson's Twitter meltdown. Or his meltdown about a Twitter meltdown, it seems to be. Isn't that kind of what happened? It's just the video is called Twitter ban. And it's 15 minutes long. Two and a half million views. Okay, I'm in. He's going to tell it like it was, all right? Damn. They paid for the fucking lighting and the background. He's got a fucking suit on and shit. Oh, God. Wow. Come on. Hello, everyone. Hello. A few days ago, I penned an irritated tweet in response to one of the latest happenings. <laughs> a few days ago, <laughs> I penned an, an irritated tweet <laughs> with ferocious anger <laughs> and indignation. I indignantly authored a tweet. <laughs> oh, God. Brilliant. ...on the increasingly heated culture war front in response to the decision of an actress actor named Ellen Elliot Page. <laughs> I am employing this awkward and impossible naming style because it is now apparently mandatory and am probably doing it wrong nonetheless, as you're doing it wrong is the whole point of what has been made mandatory. Yeah, but you just call him Elliot. He, him, Elliot. Would you, how, how, how are you pretending to find that difficult? The fuck? I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Um, just gotta make sure I... I uh, recently had an altercation on Twitter.com with... with Sean Combs... <laughs> sorry, P. Diddy? <laughs> oh, God. Fuck. <laughs> I was admittedly beset by a confrontation from Curtis James Jackson the third a 50 cent as if that is even in any language probable to name oneself after a unit of currency. But nonetheless <laughs> <laughs> oh shit Sorry. but also I'm trying to make a point I've essentially been banned from Twitter as a consequence <laughs> I say banned oh. although technically, technically I have been suspended, suspended. Okay, yeah. but the suspension will not be lifted unless I delete the hateful tweet in question yeah. and I would rather die than do that <laughs> And hopefully it will not come to that, although who the hell knows in these increasingly strange days. He must have deleted the tweet. <laughs> he said, he, what? <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah, he hasn't posted any, there's nothing since. <laughs> Did someone hold a gun to his head? No, they can't have, because then he would have chosen to let them kill him. Beta! What was it that I said that caused such a fuss? And that fuss is just beginning. <laughs> and even more importantly and <laughs> complexly, what exactly was it that I said that resulted in the ban? Here is the tweet in question. Uh -huh. Remember when pride was a sin? And Ellen Page just had her breasts removed by a criminal physician. I be, it's the, what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, God, you're, yeah. That's just a really strange thing for an old manny, an academic, no less, to be, uh, oh, God, schizoid. He's gone. And then a link to a story that detailed out the happenings. The response from Twitter, quote, Violating our rules against hateful conduct. You may not promote violence against, threaten, or harass other people <laughs> on the basis of race, ethnicity, national origin, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, religious uh, yeah, affiliation, yeah, yeah. age, disability, or serious disease. By clicking delete, 
You acknowledge that your tweet violated the Twitter rules. Delete. Okay. If you think we've made a mistake, submit an appeal to us. Please note that should you- Oh God, he's so angry. Holy shit, the sass. That's not, they, they, you get, they give you an out as well if you acknowledge that you violated TOS. They're not asking you to say that you were right or wrong. Just like, you can keep your fucking, uh. isn't it ironic that he's talking about pride being a sin and this is all pride? Uh. You do so, your account will remain locked while we review your appeal. Let's take this apart. Yeah. It's a, First, to, it's a lot to unpack in this. <laughs> it is clearly the case that I did not promote violence against or threaten anyone with my missive. So that leaves the arguably lesser sin of harass. Mm -hmm. Let's assume, since I wasn't informed, that that was the crime. And further, harassment on the basis of so-called gender identity since <laughs> Twitter did not do me the favor of actually specifying my crime, and there are many possibilities on that front, we unfortunately have to guess at why this is It's occurring. pretty fucking obvious, bro. He spoke about their fucking top surgery and misgendered him. Like, why are you pretending to not know the rules of Twitter.com? You don't have to agree with them. It's just, holy shit. Heard, and that's actually a big problem. In Reminder that pride is... <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've seen these. I almost bought one for a video, but it was 400 euros. Remember that pride is a sin. Also, don't forget to buy your Jordan Peterson busts for just 400 euros. <laughs> okay. In and of itself, and also indicative of the utter carelessness of the Twitter organization with regard to the propriety of its own sensorial actions. I should at least know exactly what I did wrong if I am required to acknowledge that my tweet violated the Twitter rules. It's a fucking social media platform, you idiot. What is this like? I don't know, you act like you've just been arrested, like there should be due process for a Twitter suspension. Oh God. What rules, you sons of bitches? Exactly, precisely because such things matter when the accusations start flying. Yeah, he's mad. He's so what did furious. I say that might constitute harassment? Well, many things, hypothetically. I thought that tweet about the fucking uh, plus size model was as bad as it got. I thought that was him, done. I could have waited like a week for him to do this and had another Jordan Peterson video, sure. Okay. Let's begin with, remember when pride was a sin? Although that is merely a factual statement because under the old rules applicable even a decade ago, pride was a sin and had been recognized as perhaps the cardinal sin for thousands of years previously. It still might be regarded as unacceptable to the woke authoritarian moralists who now insist, for example, that we celebrate pride month, not uh -huh. hour or day or week, but month, and who have literally called wait. it Pride Month, Pride Year, instead of LGBT Plus Month or whatever else alphabet acronym which is currently insisted upon as the only acceptable enlightened terminology. I don't regard pride as a virtue. It has been classically regarded as a sin. I don't see that sexual orientation or sexual desire of any sort is something to celebrate or to take pride in. And so what I said was merely a fact. Now, it's possible that I hurt someone's feelings because I pointed out that pride goes before, for example, a fall, but I don't care about oh. that, would do it again. And also consider it my duty to warn those who are about to fall into a pit that the path they are on leads suddenly downhill. But that was probably- I don't know, there's a lot of wrath happening in this fucking uh, video, so I don't know. Wow. Not the reason that I was banned from Twitter, although, as I said, I am in the position of having to guess. Next phrase to interrogate. And Ellen Page. 
Now, why did I stop there? <laughs> because in all likelihood, it was oh, this seemingly innocuous phrase, including the name of a well-known actress, mm. there I'm in trouble again, that likely resulted okay, in my so ban. You do know. I committed the fatal crime of what has come to be known in the appalling sensorial terminology of the insane activists as dead naming, which mm. is the act of referring to someone who has transitioned, another hated piece of jargon and slogan, by the name and by the inference, the gender, really the sex, that everyone knew them by previously, and in the case of Ellen slash Elliot, that millions of people recognized and knew. So I should have either called him, her, they, Elliot, instead of Ellen, although as we will discover, that would have made it impossible for me to say what I wanted to and need to say in the remaining phrases. Not that such a problem would bother those who are objecting to my speech in the first place. <laughs> I couldn't possibly address him as the rock without <laughs> caveating that that is not in fact his name. <laughs> Am I supposed to address him in every tweet as Dwayne Johnson slash The Rock slash Rocky Maivia for those of you who had the privilege of being on this God's green earth in the mid-1990s? Okay. The next phrase is, just had her breasts removed. This bit suffers from a very similar problem. I employed the forbidden pronoun her when Elliot, Ellen, is now to be regarded as a he or else. <laughs> but there's a conundrum here, to say the least, and not just for me. And it's I almost as if this guy is like, it's almost as if your system of gendering and naming people is really fucking difficult. I really wonder why no one does it your way, Jordan. Have been banned because of it. Was Elliot slash Ellen a she or a he? <laughs> or Ellen or Elliot, when she or he or they, uh, that's Elliot or Elian, by the uh -huh. way, had his or her or their breasts removed. If he or she was a he, then why was it necessary to have the mastectomy? And how could those I am writing to make sense of what I was saying if it was his breasts that were removed? Were those male breasts or mm. female breasts that were removed? If they were male breasts, then why were they removed? If they were female breasts and had therefore become objectionable to the degree that surgery generally reserved for cancer treatment was required, <laughs> was morally obligatory, then wasn't- Haven't people been getting surgeries for like self-esteem reasons for a really long time as well? Uh, okay. Elliot, still Ellen, and he still she? How could I possibly have written that sentence in any sensible manner whatsoever? Do you think this script was written by Shapiro? Oh, it does sound a bit like it, doesn't it? Yeah. It does sound a bit Shapiro-esque. While simultaneously making my point understandably and not breaking Twitter rules against so-called hateful conduct. And Elliot Page just had his breasts removed? Was he Elliot then? When exactly? Exactly. He was definitely Ellen at some point in the past, or so indicate all his, her. The Rock had breasts or, wait, did he? <laughs> wait, no. I have wondered why he has such flat titties. Um, oh, when he was young, you mean? Didn't he not have like, um, because he had that fucking thing where your body produces too much estrogen, is that what you mean? Oh, from steroid. Oh. Yeah, he, um, he did. So when he was, yeah, from his, oh, okay, yeah, you can see it here, like, really clearly. Yeah. Gynecomastia. Is that what it's called? Yeah, well, okay. What a giga chat, anyway.
her, them, their film credits. Will all those have to be reshot since they employed the hated dead name? That doesn't exist, by the way, that dead name category, except in the sensorial and addled minds of a tiny fraction of insanely narcissistic and increasingly <laughs> dangerous trans activists. When? Well, I mean, how do you think words work, Jordan Peterson? You know what dead naming means. It's not like someone's going to talk about a dead name and you're going to be sitting there really confused about whether or not... <laughs> how does one kill that such as a name which cannot truly die? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's... Okay. Precisely was it incumbent on me to switch my terminology in regard to Elliot slash Ellen so that I was not engaging in hateful conduct? And how can I describe the fact that someone who was once a woman, and really still is, had her breasts cut off because she, he, they, their, them, had fallen prey to a viciously harmful fad, without using the appropriate sex-linked pronoun and the real name of the real person to whom this was really done with his, her, their voluntary but unfortunate acquiescence. And so it was impossible to communicate what had happened to my audience without apparently running afoul of the impossible and absurd rules that now hypothetically govern morality itself in the days... No, they've clearly written it together because it's got all the Jordan Peterson word salad as well. He's, he's basically, like, Ben Shapiro's input here was like, we really need to hammer home that what we are in fact talking about is a woman. Therefore, we must also highlight the absurdity of the gender ideology. So we should probably refer to Elliot every single time, slash Ellen, as he, her, she, him, he, there, it, fay, fair. And let's just use it every time. Every single time. And then Jordan Peterson was like, oh, oh, yes. And we should also, we should also constantly refer to the ideological, authoritarian, narcissistic, pathological, schizophrenic nature of the modern left. Of the degenerated postmodern and Marxist ethos that we must still, no matter how impossible it is, <laughs> abide by or else. <laughs> and you might object, Alan slash Elliot is... <laughs> He's, force, he's forcing himself so hard. But apparently it's impossible to just call him Elliot. <laughs> what the fuck? Right. An adult, 30-something, and fully capable of making up his, her, their own mind about such things. And she, he, they are welcome <laughs> from the liberal and the libertarian position to go to hell in a handbasket as she, <laughs> he, they see fit. Mic drop. And fair enough. Everyone clap. To some degree. But I don't believe it is either merely picayune or inappropriate to point out that Ellen slash Elliot, who is quite a good actor slash actress, <laughs> is also a ritual model for emulation. Being a star with all the privileges and, let us point out, the responsibilities that go along with that. So by well, you have the responsibility not to be trans if you're an actor. Okay, that's fine. Acquiescing to this surgery and by publicizing it, by insisting upon the sanctity and the moral virtue of his, her, their new, expensive, dangerous, and medically enhanced identity, and by participating in the whole identity charade, Alan slash Elliot has undoubtedly, with his, her, their so-called courage, and remember, the White House itself has tweeted out every indication of believing in the courage of those who transition. Enticed many a poor, confused adolescent girl, most likely, <laughs> to blame her emergent, pubescent self-consciousness, confusion, and discomfort on being born in the wrong body and believing that the courageous, self-affirming, and morally admirable route is hormonal treatment, sterilization, Subjugation to a lifetime of expensive medical complication. How delightfully profitable is that? And misery. And I believe firmly that Ellen slash Elliot, or whatever the hell her name or his name is, bears moral... <laughs> Why do you act so... <laughs> oh, God. Whatever the hell... Fuck. ...culpability for that. Mm. And finally, finally, with regard to the final phrase, criminal physician. I must say that I've had some post-coital, so to speak, regrets about that phrase. Post-coital? Isn't post-coital like, wait, 
I thought post-coital was after sex. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Who did you fuck while you were misgendering Elliot Page, Jordan? <laughs> what? Or did he, was he nutting to old pictures? Uh, yeah, he just wanted to use the word, yeah. It is clearly the case that the surgical operation performed by the butchers who butchered Elliot slash Ellen was legal. Mm. So, was it criminal? Was it criminal? Or not? <laughs> Were the operations <laughs> undertaken by the fascist physicians who carried out the Nazi medical experiments uh -huh. legal? Uh. Yes, under the laws of the time. But were they criminal? Was it criminal? <laughs> I'll leave that question up to you to answer. Was it criminal? <laughs> when the Nazi doctors took in children and injected their eyeballs with adrenaline, administered drops of adrenaline into the eyes, thus blinding them in order to change the color to one more befitting of the Aryan race, i.e. blue. And then in his frustration that adrenaline did not in fact change the color of the patients, I say the word patient in a very liberal sense, eyes, would he then rip the eyeballs out and pin them to the wall like an arrangement of deranged, psychotic, narcissistic, pathological butterflies. When you describe that to me and then I am confronted on the other end with someone who has their breasts reduced because it makes them feel better, I personally can see no difference. But I will in fact leave this conundrum up to you in the audience. And further, perhaps it might be objected. What about the damage done by hypothetically leaving those confused about their identity to dwell in their confusion? Oh. Aren't we morally mm. obliged to intervene? Mm. And I would say, no. No! <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, first, do no harm as the Hippocratic Oath, remember that, insists. And second, it has been a matter of historical consensus that- I get that he has a hard time with gender, but why call him Ellen? It's just a name change. Was he that triggered by Alice Cooper? Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, fake outrage because he just hates trans people, but uh, yeah. Sins of omission are less egregious than sins of commission. Thus, leaving someone with gender dysphoria, no matter how warranted, and perhaps it is in a very tiny minority of truly unfortunate cases, to suffer the consequences of the theoretical mismatch between soul and body is less of a risk ethically, personally, socially, and philosophically than the extremely active intervention that constitutes so-called gender confirming, another hated phrase, surgery. <laughs> Why don't you... <laughs> Oh, God, it's gender affirming. What a fucking idiot. Know, the, know your enemy. God damn it. I might also point out mm. that the trans surgery enterprise is now a $300 million per annum growth industry. Rate of projected expansion, 15% per year. Projected Boost. increase by 2027 to $750 million per year. An expanding enterprise. An in a time of global enterprise. Time to invest both in the requisite surgical skills and perhaps in any industry associated with this vicious and unconscionable fad, primarily entangling, as such things so often do. The fact that a guy with a fucking hair transplant can be saying all this as well, like, how despicable of a human being do you have to be? Because if you're saying that it's all just like, if, you're, if your insistence is that the gender, the trans thing is all just like feelings, it's not like a real medical necessity, it's just to feel better, like how can you possibly apply that? Like, 
and not notice. Why is this okay? Is it because it's harder to describe graphically and with horror? <laughs> Wait, law? What are you a I fucking don't know. Liberal? liberal? Thanks, dedicated bot for the uh, tier one sub. Gramps acting weird again. He certainly is. A hype train is close, chat. Pay attention. Youthful and female. Isn't that a concern? Isn't Intersectionalist? That a concern? Not when push comes to shove or ideology to scalpel. Is that not a true moral hazard? A true moral hazard? And I'm not taking down that All tweet right. or acknowledging <laughs> that my tweet violated the Twitter uh, rules. No, you did. You took it. Oh, God. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. Twitter's a rat hole in the final analysis, and I have probably contributed to that. While I will not remove this tweet for the life of me, and I will willingly declare that under oath. <laughs> uh, might as well. He should have said. Should have gone all the way. ...to use, understand, and master that horrible, toxic platform. Toxic. No doubt, I owe some apologies for that, and I'm trying to learn, but it's a relief, in some <laughs> real sense, to be banned. And I regard it under the present conditions as a badge of honor. <laughs> <laughs> a badge of honor, right? Yeah? You mean a mark of pride, dipshit? Oh, God. Thing is, he is a bit weirder these days. He's, he tweets a lot. June 26th, 3rd, 4th, 5th. Yeah, he, goes, he tweets a lot. This is all 24th. Uh, but we're all trying. We're all trying our best, guys. That's true. I don't want to be one of those guys. Um, palate cleanser. Oh, okay. We'll do this first, and then we'll go back to whatever we're talking about. Most men like working on things, tools, objects, fixing things. This is what men enjoy doing. Have you ever noticed if a guy's out in his driveway working on something with tools, how all the other men in the neighborhood are magnetically drawn to this activity? They just come wandering out of the house like zombies. But if any invention marks the decline of human civilization, I think it would have to be the snooze alarm. The snooze alarm is based on the so idea true. that when the alarm goes off, you are not getting up. You're not even awake, you're already a failure. It's supposed to be such a prestigious occupation, but it's really like one of the only jobs where you have to have your diploma right up there on the wall. It makes him seem so insecure, doesn't it? I really am a doctor, you know. Is this him teaching his maps of meaning? Oh, no. You think that was actually not, a just course? Check it out. <laughs> oh, shit. Now, every time somebody recommends a doctor, it's always the best. Always oh, is he good? Always oh, the best. This guy's the best. They can't all be the best. There can't be this many best. Someone's graduating at the bottom of these classes. Where are these doctors? 